SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living and uh, can you continuing on with the RV refrigerator replacement here. Um, this is the new refrigerator that we decided to go with and it's just a residential or home model. Um, it's a 4.5 cubic foot Frigidaire and this is basically um, the smallest unit that I could find that w had a freezer on it and it actually fits perfectly into the spot so it uh, um, should fit right into that cabinet with the exception of it is shorter and so uh, I'm just gonna put a shelf on the top of it there and make a little extra storage space so um, but it looks like a real nice little unit um, I've had some Frigidaire products before and they've been very good um, obviously we have a cat coming to join us here um, so I, I think this will this will work out real well for us. It's a little bit smaller than the unit that was in there, but uh, you know this was two hundred dollars out the door, free shipping, and the op the, the closest and cheapest option was about five hundred dollars to replace the cooling unit on the old one. And for a new RV three-way propane, twelve volt, and one hundred twenty volt refrigerator, you're looking at twelve to fourteen hundred dollars um, for a replacement for this. So um, this is definitely. In my opinion, the way to go. Um, only disadvantage is we can't run it off propane or 12 volt uh, when we're on the road or if we don't have access to electricity. But in our case, we're always going to have access to electricity. And we can always just uh, take this and uh, plug it in the day before, get it all cooled down, put all our food in there, take our trip, which normally is no more than four or five hours, and uh, plug it in when we get there. And it should be just fine. So. Um, also could add an inverter to this and uh, we do have a little battery bank that we'll be expanding to and we could run it on the inverter and battery bank as we cruise down the road so lots of options but we'll go ahead and show you the the progress and or process of uh, getting this installed all right so the the wood uh, flooring here the piece of plywood that was in here looks like it had a little bit of water damage it was a little bit weak so i went ahead and put a new piece of half inch plywood um, just right on top of that other piece just to give it some extra rigidity so um, that'll support the new refrigerator and um, i also took out the propane line in the back and i'll go ahead and show you um, how that came out um, since i'm not using propane anymore i just wanted to remove that propane line completely um, there was a hole right here where the propane line came up through which i've covered now and uh, i was able to just feed it through i can't really see because it's dark but i was able to feed it through um, the bottom there and i'll show you what it looks like outside all right so this is the piece that just uh, poked up through the the bottom here this was hooked into the uh, old refrigerator so i just went ahead and bent that right off because i don't need this anymore at all and then i was able to feed the uh the uh, copper tubing right down through the bottom and there's a here's the, the copper pipe that came out of there and it was basically hooked in where you at right there and that's just a half inch standard black pipe so i'll need to just get a half inch plug to plug that off and we won't need to use that anymore all right, there was a, a bunch of insulation, uh, fiberglass insulation on each uh, side and back of the panels in here. And so I, what I've done is just gotten some styrofoam to replace that, some low R value um, styrofoam uh, that I'm going to put in there. And I'm just using some construction adhesive um, that's made specifically for the styrofoam to uh, it, adhere it to the walls. And that's just going to add a little bit of extra insulation in here. So um, keep the refrigerator noise down and also keep the cold air, which will be because this is open to the air in the back here. So I'm going to try to seal this off as best I can. So we'll get that put in here and I'll show you what's done. All right. So we got all the styrofoam uh, insulation in here. Um, this stuff's pretty cheap. It's kind of hard to work with because it doesn't really, the edges aren't real, real nice on it. But uh, it was eight dollars for a sheet versus thirty-five dollars for the the good stuff, the silverback stuff. So we'll go with this. Um, I just use that a construction adhesive uh, that's specially made for the styrofoam stuff to um, get it all. Uh, just glued it right to the the paneling on the back and the little little uh, framing that's in there. So. That'll look uh, look a lot nicer and keep this uh, little area nice and uh, insulated and quieter as well. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and get the refrigerator moved in here and we'll see kind of how it looks and what type of trim work we need to do and uh, what size the shelf will be on the top and all that good stuff. All right, so the fridge went in there real nice. Um, as you can see it, the width wise, it fits in there just perfectly. Um, there's a little gap here at the top that we'll cover up with a piece of uh, trim. I was going to put a shelf in here, but this thing gets pretty hot at the top, so I'm going to leave as much airspace at the top, and I'm just going to um, we're just going to block this whole whole section right off here. Um, I'm going to try to get some paneling sticker that you can put on. It's like contact paper that will try to match this. Otherwise, I'll just have to stain it. Um, and then down at the bottom as well there's a little gap down here we're just going to put a little piece of trim that'll fit right in there and i'll just use a finish nailer just to tack it in and that'll also just help kind of um, dress up this area here at the bottom i'll show you around the back how i kind of mounted it down. all right so here's the back of the unit from the outside and i just had to put a little shim underneath here just because it wasn't quite um, level in there um, adjusted the little legs in the front and i just threw in a a screw right here through the frame right down into my my subfloor that I put in and then I did the same thing here I just threw a, a two and a half inch screw right here right through the frame just drilled a hole in it and so that's nice and center or uh, tied right down to the subfloor and then the cord ties in right here and plugs in to the uh, outlet there so um, that should just hold the back end of it down and then we'll use the moldings in the front to hold the front of it stable all right, so we've gotten the uh, trim work in here, and I just put a piece of three-quarter inch pine along the bottom and just tack that in with the uh, finish nailer and uh, hold that in place. Um, it's just to kind of cover the gap there. It's not holding anything in. Uh, I was going to put a screw through the bottom here, actually into the framing of the refrigerator, but I'm not actually sure where any of the coils and refrigeration lines are in this, so I don't want to do that. Um, the refrigerator is in here nice and firmly with the screws I put in the bottom anyway and the backside. Um, and uh, with the framing around it and everything like that, it's not going anywhere. So um, I also put a piece of uh, pine up here as well, three-quarter inch pine. And this, again, this is all going to be covered up. And we got some a little bit of repair work to do on this stuff here. Uh, but this will all be covered up with some type of... Uh, of uh, like contact paper or something like that that has this type of fake wood grain in it that'll match up with this so we'll cover all that up and hopefully that'll keep any you know air from blowing through there and just kind of covers that up it actually looks pretty decent um just as it is but uh we'll cover it up and make it look nice so but the fridge fits in there perfectly um, you know, I'm so glad that we went this way instead of spending all that money on the RV refrigerator. We're never going to run this on propane anyway, and if we want to run it off a of DC, we can throw an inverter in here, and uh, we, we will do that down the road anyway. But uh, this will work just fine to fire it up and let it cool down um, before we take the trip, and then just take our trip and plug it in when we get there. So, um, so for about under $300, we were able to get a nice little refrigerator in here and uh, instead of uh, 1400 hours or whatever it is for for a full new replacement so um, one of the things that we will have to do is probably maybe put a little piece of tape around these shelves just to keep them from jiggling around in here when we're going down the road um, but everything else looks like it's got you know pretty good supports in it and everything to hold anything else in place so um, we'll just have to be careful when we open it, I guess, <laughs> but uh, it should be fine. So, so if you're looking to replace your RV refrigerator, um, this is one option that you have. You can always go with a direct replacement and order that right online or from your local dealer, and um, you'll spend a lot more money. It will fit in there a little bit nicer, but uh, this is one way you can do it for much, much, much cheaper. So hopefully this helped give you some ideas. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.